Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's your boy, Pigsky and Pete. Happy Tuesday to everybody. Six days and counting before the big game between the Clemson Tigers and the LSU Tigers. What we're going to do today is take a look at some numbers. Anybody who's been following me for an extended period of time knows I do not live and die by statistics. I think they can be misleading in a lot of ways. Um, there is something you can learn from them, though. And there's one glaring difference between these two teams that I'm going to point out today. We're going to take a look at the same website that I was looking at when I did this same breakdown between Ohio State and, of course, Clemson and the Fiesta Bowl or prior to the Fiesta Bowl. Only difference here is when, you, when we looked at those statistics between Ohio State and Clemson, they were neck and neck in almost every single category offensively and defensively. It was Clemson was number one in this category. Ohio State was number two. Ohio State was number, number one in this category. Clemson was number two, back and forth, back and forth. Everything was pretty much identical. And we saw that play out on the field in the game. I mean, this game could have gone either way. Two very, very evenly matched teams. We're going to look at the same website, shaking up the Southland. Let's go ahead and do that. Pull that up. Um... This is the only reason I use this is because it's very easy to read for the viewer. Okay, this website. Uh, but these are all valid numbers here. Let's just take a look at the offenses. LSU, number one ranked offense in the country, Clemson, number four. There's about a three point difference per game there. Um, so, not a huge discrepancy there. Uh, of course, LSU fans, have, are, they're doing the same thing Ohio State fans did whenever I did this same comparison between the two teams. And they made a huge mistake. They're making the same huge mistake that Ohio State fans were making by saying, oh, well, your numbers don't matter because you play in the ACC. A lot of these numbers are for, for LSU are also against bad teams. Arkansas, which is maybe the worst team in, in, in the FBS this year. Um, uh, Vanderbilt, uh, Ole Miss, Mississippi State. So... Uh, they had their share of bad teams that scored uh, on them as well. So, But anyway, we saw, Ohio State fans saw that Clemson playing in the ACC didn't seem to matter in that game. Anyway, scoring offense, uh, I'm sorry, we already did that one. Rushing yards per game rank, LSU 61. So in the middle of the pack in the, in the Power Five and Group of Five uh, combined. Uh, Clemson 12. In the country, you're uh, rushing yards per game, 167 for LSU, 246 for Clemson. So you're talking about about a 40 yard difference there. I'm sorry, 80 yard difference there. Uh, about uh, yards per carry, 4.8 for LSU, uh, 20. I'm sorry, 6.41 for Clemson. And so that uh, the passing yards per game rank number two for LSU, number 20 for Clemson. So what you've already seen here, basically is that uh, LSU's main mode of attack on offense is passing the ball. Clemson is much more balanced as far as rushing and passing. That's the main thing. So that already tells me, b before we even look at the defensive numbers, that already tells me that obviously what everybody already knew, and that's, in order for Clemson to win this game, they need to limit Burrow and those receivers. Not saying I, I realize you guys get your running back uh, back healthy finally, and so he's uh, he's certainly a great running back, and he's certainly going to be a, a a big factor in this game. But the the poison still comes on the arm of Joe Burrow, so that is the key. And I don't think I'm telling anybody anything they don't know. Uh, so let's take a look at some defensive numbers here. This little two four seven composite comparison is is kind of this is the reason I don't like statistics. You look at overall, look, they're almost e perfectly evenly matched as far as offense and defense, but they have Clemson leading in the composite uh, offensively and LSU defensively, which is the opposite of what the statistics say. I don't know where they, you know, that's the reason I don't pay too much attention to that kind of kind of stuff there. All right, let's look at the defensive comparisons. Uh, Clemson's number one scoring defense in the country has been for a while at 11.5 points per game given up, and that includes the Fiesta Bowl, obviously. Uh, 28th for LSU. Uh, rushing yards per carry allowed. Clemson, 10th uh, in the nation. LSU, 26th. Rushing yards per carry allowed. 
uh, that was the rank. This is the the yardage, uh, 3.6, 3.12. So not a whole lot of difference. There's a, it's amazing how that small amount of you know less than a yard can be a difference between 16 spots in the rankings uh, nationally. So uh, another reason that that stats can be a little bit misleading. Um, passing yards per per attempt allowed rank, uh, 22nd for LSU, first for Clemson. Now I'll think about that for a second. You're talking about the number one passing attack in the country in LSU. You're talking about the number one pass defense in the country in Clemson. So that's the matchup we're looking for. That's the key to this whole thing. If I could circle this on the screen right now with my finger, I would. There's, there's your matchup to look for. Clemson's defensive backs and linebackers versus Burrow and these receivers. That's what, I, that's what everyone's looking for. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Uh, passing yards per attempt allowed, uh, okay, yeah, tackle for loss rank, tied 46 at uh, 6.3 per game for LSU, and Clemson's ranked number nine in the country at 7.9 tackles for loss for, per game. Sack rank, tied for 40th for LSU, 18th for Clemson, and you can see the amount of sacks per game on average, uh, less than a one sack different, uh, about a half of a sack different. So there you have it. Uh, now, again, the only reason I showed this, guys, is because I think it tells the story of the key to this game. And that key is slowing down the passing attack for LSU. And I think that Clemson's just – a little bit more balanced as far as running. And they, they've been this way for a while. This is nothing new. Clemson is a very balanced. They have been for several years now. Uh, they run the ball about 55% of the time, and they pass the ball about 45% of the time. And um, outside of, you know, an air raid offense like uh, what you're seeing Mike Leach run up there at Washington State, there's nobody that has more passing yards per game than, than LSU. So that's the key to this game. Um, in my opinion, I'm always going to side on the team with – the better defense, the more consistent defense. Okay, I'm, I want to I want to change the way I say that because a lot of people are coming down on me about saying that Clemson's got a better defense, uh, a more consistent defense for sure. And the second part of that is uh, yeah, a more consistent defense and a more a more balanced offensive attack. So you can't zero in on one or the other for Clemson if you're LSU's defense. You can't zero in on ETN and try to shut down him and Lawrence from running because they'll eat you alive in the passing game and vice versa. So that's the reason I, that's the reason I give Clemson the slight edge in this game, but I think it's going to be an extremely, extremely compelling close game, a chess match back and forth between uh, Brent Venables and, you know, this offensive, uh, this offensive staff, including Joe Brady for LSU and Joe Burrow. So anyway, we'll get a little bit more into this in the coming days. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day. Pigskin Pete checking out.